Hi guys, I'm Ellie and I'm going to be doing videos on some basic music theory. After each section we will review the information before we go on anything further. Throughout the video feel free to pause as I know myself how difficult it can be to get your head around it. The first topic up for discussion is staffs, clefs and ledger lines. These videos are for people who may need help developing their musical knowledge or for those who would like to gain a further understanding from a different point of view. This is the grand staff. It consists of 11 lines and 10 spaces which notes are placed upon. The lines and spaces are the white notes on a piano. This means there will be no sharps and flats as they use the black keys unless it's indicated, but we'll get more onto that on a separate video. You'll now be able to see a note that has just appeared on the grand staff. This note is called middle C. It gets its name as it sits on the middle line. If we now take away the middle line that the note is sat upon, you can see that they have now separated into two different staffs. A modern staff of five lines and four spaces, which these staffs now have. Now we can add clefs to the top and bottom staff. All a clef does is indicate the notes that will be used, and they'll show you the two most common clefs. The two most common clefs are the treble clef and the bass clef. Looking back at the middle C, you can see that the treble clef is above it, which is used for the higher notes played above middle C. The bass clef is below it, which is used for the lower notes played below middle C. Now we can work out what notes we can use from where middle C sits in both staffs. The information that we have obtained in this section so far is that the grand staff has 11 lines and 10 spaces. The note that is sat on the middle line of the grand staff is called middle C. The two most common clefs are the treble clef and the bass clef. The staff above middle C uses a clef called a treble for the higher notes. The staff below middle C uses a clef called the bass that uses those low notes. We can now focus on the two individual clefs. Let's start with the treble clef. Another name you might hear it be called is the G clef. This is because that red line that's going through the clef is the note G. The first note that you can see is middle C. This is where the note sits on the treble clef. Starting from there we can work out the rest of the notes. After C we have D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then finally we've got A. As you can see, the notes don't go any higher than G. When we do get to a G, we just start from A again. To make this easier, I'm going to show you the notes just in the spaces and just on the lines. You can always go back to where the notes are all together when you have more confidence to challenge yourself. But for now, we'll just start with the spaces. This is what the notes look like when they are just in the spaces. The bottom note that we have in the space is F. Then it works its way up to E, then C, and then finally we've got E. An easy way to remember the order is that it just spells out the word face from the bottom note. Now we can move on to the notes that's just on the lines. This is what the notes would look like when they are just on the lines. Starting from the bottom line we've got the note E, then G, then B, then D, and finally we'll have F. One way in which you can remember the order of the notes is using the phrase Every good boy deserves football. You can make up your own scene if you find that it's easier to remember. The information that we've obtained in this section was that another name for the treble clef is the G clef. We know that the middle C sits at the bottom of the staff. The notes only go as high as G and then go back to the note A. The notes for the spaces are F, A, C and E, which we use the word face to remember the order starting from the bottom space, F. The notes for the lines are E, G, B, D and F. We use the phrase every good boy deserves football to remember the order starting from the bottom line E. Now we can move on to the bass clef. 
This is the bass clef. Another name you might hear it be called is the F clef. This is because that red line that's going through the clef is the note F. This is where middle C sits on the bass clef. You can see that middle C is at the top of the staff compared to the treble clef where the note was at the bottom. We'll have to work out the notes backwards for this one just so you can see what notes the bass clef uses from the middle C. Starting from C we have B, A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, F and then we'll have E. Again. We'll make it simpler by going through just the notes on the spaces and just the notes on the lines. So let's get started with the spaces. This is what the notes look like when it's just the spaces. The first note from the bottom is A, then C, then E, and then we have G. A phrase that you can use to remember the order of the notes is all cows eat grass. Again, you can come up with your own saying if that's easy for you. Now we can work out the notes for the lines. This is what the notes look like when it's just the lines. The first note from the bottom is G, then B, then D, then F, and then we have A. A phrase that you can use to remember the order is good boys do fine always. This is just another example so feel free to change it. The information that we've obtained from this section is that another name for the bass clef is the F clef. We know that middle C sits at the top of the staff. The notes for the spaces are A, C, E and G. To remember the order we use the phrase all cows eat grass. The notes for the lines are G, B, D, F and E and to remember the order we use the phrase good boys do fine always. We can now move on to our final section, which is ledger lines. All a ledger line is, is an extra line that we add when there are no more lines or spaces left on the staff. Throughout this clip, we have seen a few ledger lines, for example, middle C. As you can see, there is a little line that's going through the note, which is our ledger line. This shows that this particular note is going through a line. Here's an example of what a note would look like if it needed to be in the space. You can use as many ledger lines as you want, but they tend to only get used up to middle C on both clefs just to make it look simpler and so that you don't get lost or confused. Let's use an extreme example of ledger lines. The note on the treble clef is an E. You can see how many extra lines it has, which doesn't look very pleasing. However, this is how the note would look if it was on the bass clef. It is still the exact same note as both notes are two lines away from middle C. Now, let's do an example where the notes are only one apart from middle C. The note on the bass clef is a B. As we said before, it's only one note above middle C. The note on the treble clef there's also a B. It's again only one note above middle C. In this situation you could choose what's better for you. The information that we've obtained in this section is that ledger lines are just added small lines which we use when there are no spaces or lines on the staff. We can also use as many ledger lines as we like, however if anything is below middle C we tend to stick with the bass clef and if it is above middle C we tend to just stick with the treble clef. Throughout this clip, we have learnt about the grand staff and middle C, we have discussed the treble and the bass clef and how they are connected by middle C. We have also touched upon ledger lines. The next clip will be on note and rest durations. I've tried to make this as simple and clear as possible to help you learn some basic music theory. If you've benefited from this clip, then watch out for our next topic. I hope you've enjoyed watching.